Now, can you imagine Isaiah saying, there's going to be somebody coming to a woman that she ain't never knew a man. Mm -hmm. And his name going to be Emmanuel. Mm -hmm. 700 years before he showed up. So, 700 years of ridicule. Mm -hmm. I thought we were going to get out of this stuff. I thought we were going to have a Messiah. I thought we were going to have this going on. Mm -hmm. Maybe the process is equally <laughs> important. As the promise. Yes, sir. Yes. And folks don't like talking about yes. that. That's why you only get like four people said, Yeah, you're right. Praise the Lord. I want mine. Mm -hmm. It sounds good about it, but I gotta have mine. <laughs> oh, good glory, glory. The whole earth is being filled with this glory. Not and could not be possible unless humanity is filled with the glory of God. Man is the dwelling place of God. This would require every human man to be born of the incorruptible seed of the word of God, the glory of God, the presence of God, in operation through them. Jesus was definitely filled with the glory of God. So are all those who have been born again of his corruptible seed. Those of us who are prisoners of this hope and are looking forward to the earth being filled with the, his glory. Why? Because we got this treasure in earthen vessels. We have treasure in earthen vessels. I don't trust. I have no confidence in my flesh. I don't trust this. I'm not saying I'm spooked by this. Because if it's offered up to the Lord, you don't have to worry about this. He's able to keep that against that day. Whatever we commit to the Lord, he's able to keep it. That's what he told Timothy. That's what Paul told Timothy. That good thing that's in you, keep by the Holy Ghost. You get what I'm saying? But he wants not only to fill you with the Holy Ghost, but he wants to fill the earth. That's what Pentecost was about, y'all. Passover, the lamb taking away the sin of the world, produced a big old channel and an opportunity for the Lord to come down to humanity. Y'all understand what I just said? Yes. The Passover, the blood, the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. He wiped humanity's slate clean. Yes. Then he came down, what, 50 days later. Uh -huh. Then he spent it talking about it. Mm -hmm. 40 days later, it shows up. Shook it in that one room. I told you before, all of the guy here was in that one room. Mm -hmm. Yes. We got baptized. Here it is. Later on, he said, there's going to be some in Acts 2. He said, they're going to believe on this word. As many that I call, that should call upon his name, going to be saved. And that thing, that verdict has been going out to the earth for a long time. Just because we're saved, just because we're being sanctified, just because we have drunk, made a drink of that same spirit is a witness to me. That God wants to fill everything. Yes. However, we haven't come to terms of what we carry. Come to terms of what you possess. And the enemy just want to keep us distracted. Keep little, uh, uh, little uh, fires and, and things around us going. Keep you on high alert. You know, if you're on high alert, you ain't going to listen to him. <laughs> Elijah gave it to us. Elijah thought everything was on high alert. Look for him at earthquake. <laughs> Look for him at whirlwind. Come on now. That was high alert. He looked for God in, in, in things. He, he want cataclysmic stuff. Let's you know God is moving. Yeah. Till he came out of the mouth of the cave and he heard him in a still, small mm -hmm. voice, but he had to wrap himself in the mantle. Put on what? The Lord Jesus Christ. And what happened? You won't make provision for your flesh. Places where we're still in agreement with the old man. Our ways of thinking. Remember, because we got treasure where? In earth and vessels. <laughs> The places where we still in agreement with the old man, our ways of thinking have only served to manifest death. 
The wages of sin is death. It's a law. Can't break it. There's absolutely nothing you can do against it. You can pray if you want to. You can fast if you want to. You can take it to a priest. You can take it to a five-fold ministry gift. You can take it if the seed, if this, if the root is defiled or corrupt, the branch is going to be defiled or corrupt. Mm -hmm. So we think if we can do things slick, man, greasy, mm -hmm. we're going to come up another way. Yeah. But he said, if you go up another way, yeah. what are you? The mm -hmm. kingdom, you can't come up another way. Mm -hmm. There's only one way. It's God's way. We have to come to understand what God has placed on the inside of us. How did I get that? Okay, there it goes. Coming to the understanding that the seed of promise is to have no relationship with the old carnal man. That's the wrong word I use. It's supposed to be the earnest, the treasure that we have. Is that for us to come to terms to understand that we have not, no contact with the old carnal man? Where? In our thinking. How do you know that? Because the carnal man, carnal mindedness is death. How do we make contact with the old man? Because he's gone through our thinking. Was that why Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead? He wasn't talking about funeral service. He was telling you, <laughs> basically, they did spiritually. Two deads in one sentence. It's a dead man on a, on a briar, and it's a dead in a relationship with me. He said, let the dead bury the dead. And we're dead because of our carnal mindedness. When we decide to get smart and contentious, and step outside of the scriptures, then we find ourselves doing what I call spiritual necromancy. Taking all our energy into it. Trying to get that which God has already determined is dead to come alive. They look good, it's dead. They're a man. They're dead. You can't, see, we can't change the nature of stuff. That's why we got to trust God. Because God knows all of us inside and out. So if I may at this point, <laughs> don't, don't let the words deceive you. You got to trust your gut. That ain't even in my notes. I just want to say that. So we ain't supposed to, have to be touching the old man and the carnal man and the carnal mind or carnal man and that old relationship. Our life will only come forth as we result of laying our humanity on the altar of Christ and allow the sweet scent of his spirit to flow unto us as a sweet smelling savior unto God. In other words, we're not supposed to have any affinity, any connection to who we used to be. Because we have this treasure and earth and vessel that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. When we start fellowshipping with dead things, we lose our fragrance. We lose our scent. Every one of us, I'm telling you, I'm new in deliverance. There's scent for everything. It's like you got scent in the earth for everything. In the spirit realm, there's scent for everything. I've been around people even to this day, even though we don't do it on, on a larger scale like we do now, I mean, then, we don't do now. The scent never leaves. So I've got around people and smelled scents. Mm -hmm. You can smell it like, man, that's a certain smell. You, just, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, everything has, has uh, because we live in the physical realm, everything has appearances, everything has scents. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Gestures and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And, and, and they, they do coincide with the spiritual realm. <coughs> we don't think it do, but it does. Amen, no matter if we think or not. Yeah. Right. So the only way we're going to get to the point where this treasure of earth and vessels is spilled over into the earth is that we got to go to the altar of Christ. 
It's not a place that you hewn out. It's not a place in your basement. It's not a place that you got a dark room and you got pictures and all scriptures up. It's not on your wall. It's not on the refrigerator. It's not in your wallet. All those things are, are, are phylacteries or paraphernalia we use to try to feel and strong in the Lord. You know, it's a sign to us. If we ever, you know, think contrary, we can say, see, I got it there. I'm strong. Mm. The altar of Christ is in your heart. Sounds like this. Nevertheless, mm -hmm. not my will, but your will be done. Yeah, amen. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. amen. Hmm? Yes. You don't have to understand everything. I don't know what's going on, but nevertheless, yeah, amen. Yeah, amen. I will be done. Yeah. Anybody ever been there? Can yeah. I get a show of hands? Yeah. All right. Thank God half the church is praying the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Come on up and play, bro. I'm going to close right here. You can talk, I kind of feel around the room. I can tell what God wants me to bring it, bring it home. God wants a scent to come from us. God wants us to come out of darkness. He commanded us to come out of darkness. And the reason why we're coming out of darkness is because he wants to do a complete job. Not only does he want to do a complete job in me, but he wants to do a complete job in the earth. <laughs> Yep. I told you a while ago I had got this thought and I seen this, I don't know, I think it was about uh, Dr. Lynn House. He put it on the, uh, Facebook and I said, man, I fell in love with this statement. I think I'm going to keep it for the rest of my life. To be in Christ, that is redemption. But for Christ to be in you, that's sanctification. I always look for that. You ever heard before I always talk about for us to be in him is one way, for him to be in us is another way. I never had a language for it. I got it now. 